Earlier, we said that sigma star is equal to sigma times mu1 over epsilon1. So you might have been tempted to specify a loop that says sigma star i is equal to sigma i times mu naught divided by epsilon naught. However, let's look at the grid. The hy's are offset by one half of a grid cell compared to the location of the ez's. As a result, if we have this polynomial grading, we need to use different sigma values because we're sampling this curve at a different location for each component in our grid. So this is what I got for i equal 1 to PML because we can have a PML on the very first HY and we would end on PML, I, I equal PML. So actually I mislabeled this. I will correct this on the PowerPoint slides. This is PML here is where there is PML also. So the HYs are going to go from 1 to PML and we can define sigma star i and I'm going to write the full expression we had earlier PML plus but here I'm going to put a 1 instead of a 1.5 and that's so that well we'll see that in just a second and divide by the thickness the thickness is the same PML plus 0.5 and this to the power m and that multiplied by sigma max and that we have to, now we have to scale it for our sigma star so this is going to be times mu naught and divided by epsilon naught and we can end the loop so now if we plug in i is equal to pml right here we'll get a value of 1. So based on our diagram, hy at i at pml right here is one grid cell in from the edge of the pml. So we're getting the appropriate value or distance into the pml when we have a 1 here instead of a 1.5 as we had for the sigma array. So we're done specifying the sigma and sigma star arrays for the PML region. Now that the sigma and sigma star values change spatially in the grid, the third change that we need to do is that we need to change the CA, CB, and DA and DB coefficients into arrays. So you can see I put a little subscript I here so that they can change spatially. This will allow us to store the coefficients at all the positions so that we don't, do not need to recalculate them at every time step. Now since the coefficients are used to update the field components across the grid, it's convenient to just make them the same size as the field components that they will be used to update. So these can be the same size as the EZ array, and these can be the same size as the HY array. These equations show the new coefficients that we developed last time. Since we're currently modeling free space in the rest of the grid outside of the PML, in air, in the free space region, sigma and sigma star, we can just have those equal to zero outside of the PML. Okay, there is one last change we need to make to the code. We want a way to test the absorbing material and see how well it's working. How do you think we should do this?